United Methodist Church friends, family, those who are gathered with us in worship this morning. It is so good to be with you as I stand here on our campus with my beloved sister, Hilda. Welcome. It's good to have you with us and to work, join us in this worship service. It is great to see you and be with you at this time. In the book of Isaiah, it reminds us that the Lord gives us peace to those who stand firm in his faith. And so at this time and in this hour of worship, we ask that you will center yourselves wholeheartedly, block out all the distractions that is happening and occurring within your household, within your workplace, or whether you're on the road, and join us as we join together in unison, in spirit, serving and worshiping our Lord at this time. Lord, we thank you for bringing us each and every one of us here today. Open our hearts to hear your words and our spirits to be transformed, to dare to journey with you. Gracious God, you have given yourself to us in flesh to the person of Jesus. We have his example of a loving ministry as a guide for our own lives. We stand as people forgiven and we stand as people reconciled to you. Be with us this day. Remind us that you are and will always be near. Strip away the fear, anxiety, and the feeling of isolation from your people who are directly affected during this pandemic. Give us the comfort and the protection we are all desperately needing and breathe into us a newness of life. May your Holy Spirit fall afresh on each of us today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Let's sing praises to our good, good Father. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you It's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you know. Just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, love, so undeniable, I, I can hardly speak peace, so unexplainable, I, I can hardly as you call me deeper still as you call me 
Welcome on this beautiful California day. Each day is a gift and a blessing from God for us. We need to be grateful for what we have, even though we are on lockdown and we need to be staying at home. Um, it is still a beautiful day and to enjoy the sunshine and hear the birds sing and just see the flowers and count our blessings for all of this that has been given to us. It is not an easy time. It is a difficult time where we do not see our friends and our families. And we are just at this point in time communicating either through, um, through Zoom or through YouTube or by phone where we can talk to our friends and just visit with them and just see how they are doing. It has been very interesting it, um, during Lent and um, Easter. It definitely was not the same. Um, not being able to be with your friends and your church family um, at that special time of year. Although I do feel that during this time my faith has gotten stronger. I, through meditation and prayer, and even more so now, where, you know, being at home and, and not being uh, participating, or not as participating as much, um, has definitely um, made a difference in um, my faith and my just knowing that God is there for me and and he is there and he will not leave me um, one thing that has really helped is our Sunday services on YouTube um, even Easter where we were able to the choir was able to get together with Clarissa and and sing an anthem um, a virtual anthem but we did do it and Mes Martin's message uh, definitely has a lot to say to us. Um, there are two other things that are really helpful for me, and that is our Bible study on Tuesday morning through Zoom, and our music fellowship with Clarissa on Thursday nights. Together, you know, it is just a blessing to see everybody and to get together and to talk and 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 just be there together. Um, it's just sad that we cannot be together at this point in time, but we are definitely doing as much as we possibly can. Uh, there's a hymn that says it all. It's the first song of Isaiah, and it goes like, Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Uh, it, it's just, I trust in him, and not, I'm not afraid. I need 
I have that faith that I know that God is watching over me and he will definitely he is there for us at all times and we need to remember that and we need to go to him in prayer and in meditation and just be available and just let him know that we need him with us even though our church is closed and we have many opportunities and we have to stay home we have many opportunities that are offered to us as I mentioned before the YouTube ser church service we have the hour of prayer we have um, the music fellowship and our Bible studies if you have needs and concerns and you need prayer you can call any one of us and we'd love to get together with you um, we are here and I've been listening to Max Lucado and he says we will get through this and um, I just say keep the faith and trust in God I miss you all and hope to see you soon hello to everyone I want to start off with um, I miss all of you guys, um, but God is good and united together. We'll stay strong. Um, I'm here to give you guys my experience on Lent. Um, I gave up caffeine, and I am going to say it was not easy at all. Um, so in the beginning, it was really difficult. I had, like, coffee cravings. Uh, I, I wanted to drink coffee. And then, um, the pandemic happened and, like, I just really wanted a cup of coffee because I work in the grocery store and it was crazy busy and, um, nothing sounded better to me than to end my day with a nice hot cup of coffee. And I think I've messaged Pastor several times, like, will God forgive me through this pandemic, um, how is it, you know, fair? Uh, can I drink decaf? Um, I don't know, just just all these things. Like you're you're doing it too, right? I'm not alone. <laughs> just to be reminded that um, God is good and uh, we do not struggle alone. Um, so I got through it. It was very difficult when I wanted to drink a cup of coffee or have a soda or anything with caffeine in it. I would have to pray, and I prayed often, I prayed very often, um, just asked God for guidance and to take this away, away from me. You know, I had to constantly be telling the devil, get behind me, devil, not today, you're not going to be able to tempt me. And I would see coffee, and it smelled so good, and it looked so good, and I was just like, praying please take this from me it's yours lord it's yours um it was not easy but it it felt amazing to accomplish uh 46 days without coffee it was a beautiful experience i felt so fulfilled um just staying in const constant contact with god was such a beautiful thing i I am so blessed to be even to even be allowed like to serve the Lord and and um, and do this it was it was a beautiful experience so I gave up coffee and what I put back was um, being nicer to my mom and building a stronger relationship with her um, in the beginning it started with me calling her every day um, saying one good thing to her and then um, just um, making an honest effort in my day, my busy day, and just, like, making sure she's happy and not saying no so much to her, because that's my problem, and just really, like, um, being there for her, and being strong with her, and, and, uh, it's been really, it's been a beautiful experience. I think our relationship grew stronger, um, being that daughter for her, and being, a a servant for God. It, it was, it was, it was a really good experience. It was such a beautiful blessing. Um, I feel, uh, I feel so light. Um, I drink coffee now and it's not, it's not really all that, that I was missing. Um, but 
the experience itself was a beautiful experience. Um, this is the first time that I've ever participated in Lent, so it was just, it was amazing. I feel amazing. Um, I miss you all. Hopefully we will all be together again soon, worshiping God under one roof. I um, Stay blessed, stay safe, and stay in constant contact with God. Love you all. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke his Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Has anybody else heard lately of the statement in which I want things to go back to normal? Or I can't wait until normal times occur again. Or I miss the normal days. You see, during this unprecedented time, many of us have fallen into a place that is far from normal. And I myself am included in this category. You see, I did not think that I would become a televangelist so early on in my ministry. Some of us feel that it is unnormal to stay in pajamas all day, or that it is unnormal to walk around outside without a face mask covering your mouth. Teachers have fallen on an unnormal time, teaching, teaching and cultivating different practices that will not only grab the attention of their students, but keep the attention of their students. Seniors in our community have fallen on unnormal times in which they are trying to connect and grow through technologies so that they may not only keep their social distance, but connect, remain connected with their brothers and sisters and their community around. You see, now is a time in which things are unnormal. Who would have thought that staying at home or social distancing yourself would actually be beneficial, not only for your neighbors, for, for all those around you as well. You see, I'm sure if you sit down and reflect back, not only on your life, but in your community and in our world today, we have all fallen on a time in which things are unnormal normal. For some of us, this is something new, for you have always been called unnormal in your life. But for others, it is understanding that this unnormal presentation is scriptural. Yeah, you see, as we are celebrating the Easter tide season, there was nothing normal about Jesus' resurrection. In fact, everything that Jesus did was unnormal. From his teachings to his miracles, from his birth in the stable to the point in which he was hung on the cross for you and me. His life was seen far from normal. And so the good news that we receive today too, as Christians, we have never been normal people. And today we are called to remember that. Remember that as Christians, we are cut from a separate and different cloth. Remember that we have been born anew and that there is nothing normal about us. Our old self has died and we are constantly made anew through the life that is kept with Christ. You see, normal people defined in dictionary brings for us the, that they are content with routines, that their patterns and even social society norms are obligated by. In case you haven't forgotten it, or in case you haven't gotten it yet, life will never be normal after this pandemic. Your relationships will be changed. Your perspective will be changed. Your appreciation and your gratitude and your attitude will be changed. Your perspective and your lifestyle will all be changed into a new normal. Some of us have entered this season not being huggers. But even after this pandemic, I am sure 
many of us will be craving it for those who were running away from it. This passage enlightens us that we are walking with Christ into the future as unnormal people. Our scripture today comes from Peter, who is one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. He is writing to a community who is enduring the experience of living as foreigners. You see, Peter acknowledges the trials and the hardships that this community must be facing and experiencing. But he affirms the true value in which they hold on so precious. What they are able to have that is more precious than any of the values they are having. And that it is faith. Yes, it is faith that Peter describes that is more precious and valuable than all the other lavish expenses that are there. And so I don't know who needs to hear this today. But it is faith that is more important than toilet paper. It is faith that is more important than the favorite restaurant in which you are craving. It is faith that is more important than water itself or the other values that you hold so dear into your life today. Peter reminds us today that we are not to just claim that we are faithful people, but to live by it. And so you must prepare your minds, body, and spirit set on the grace that Christ reveals for you daily. A scripture passage from Peter calls us Christians to live holy and righteous. Holy, in short, is the separation and the detachment from the content and attitudes of this world. It is derived from a relationship that we have established with God. For as Christ was holy, we too, who Christ lives us within us, cause us to be holy. You see, to be holy is called out distinctively and uniquely different from others in this world. And it, it is building a relationship with God and separated from this world, declaring that we are faithful people who are not normal. So knows who you are, know whose you are and who you are. Our beginning verse calls us to remind us who we belong to. For those who invoke or call on the name of the Father must be reminded to totally submit themselves before God our Father. While the word, suggest, while the word Father suggests familiarity, it is also a suggestion of power, source, and authority. The God in whom addresses as Father will also be there to judge us as people. Peter is calling out those who call on the name of God the Father, who invoke this name of Father, yet they reflect their lifestyle in a totally complete opposite way. Peter calls them out so that the Father in which you invoke will be the Father that also comes to judge. When you're invocating the name of Father God, Take it seriously. Let it mean something as though this relationship with God is something meaningful and powerful and something that is encouraging and that's something that would call you out when you are close to temptation. See, verse 1 gives us the challenge today to remember not only whose you are, but who you are. Many of us are walking through a period in our life where, it, where we feel as if it is our own exile. We are living in a time when many of us feel as if we're in a whole new different foreign world. How can you not feel like a foreigner when our lifestyle has completely changed into something we are not accustomed to during this pandemic? And so in verse 1, Peter recalls the experience of the Israelites, Israelites in which they had experienced when they were in exiles themselves. Peter calls this experience of the Israelites where they were not just sojourners rather than citizens. When they were experiencing not only the titles of being foreigners, but the hardships and the realities of being foreigners. Christians are also sojourners and foreigners of this world. You see, we live different, we respond different, we think different. Christians ought to live different and be different because we believe different and hopefully love different. 
Live in reverent fear is not about living in terror or doubt, but it is being aware cautiously of your actions, your choices, your words, and your lifestyle. You see, it is a way of saying that your life matters and that your life is something that is imperishable. Fear of the Lord is observing God's commandments and continuously seeking out a life that is in continuous alignment with the will and the purpose of God. So the fear that is mentioned in verse 17 is that we may be able to be attentive to your responses, knowing that God is instructing us and that Christ is calling you to be. So remember not only whose you are, but who you are during this pandemic. You have been claimed by the precious blood of Christ. And so know that you have been redeemed. Live a life as if you are liberated people rather than people who are in bondage and do not know where they are going in life or who is taking care of them. While at once you were captive to sin, bondage to fear, and kept in despair, it is through the blood of Christ that you have been claimed. You see, through Christ, you have the given, been given the gift of faith and hope through God. Know that in your life, it is worth more than silver, gold, or any other, other values that we have here on this earth. And so throughout this week, I encourage you, tell somebody that no, you cannot buy me because I have been bought and redeemed and been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. In verse 18, scripture affirms for us that silver or gold will perish, but the blood of Christ will continue and sustain us. You see, God does not corrupt. He does not tarnish, he, God does not evaporate, or God does not get lost as silver and gold does, or anything else that is value here on earth. But it is through this precious blood that you have seen the glorious nature of God. The glory that was revealed not only through the miracles, the teachings, the healings, and the forgiveness through the lifestyle of Christ, but it was through the death and resurrection in which we see the power of God. You see, Thomas Jefferson, the father of American liberty, was a slaveholder. He had the leisure to read and think and write about the cares of his daily life because they were taken, his life, daily life chores were taken care of by slaves. George Washington was also a slave owner. But both of these great men were concerned with the problem of slavery, and upon their death, boats had manumitted their slaves. Little had changed between the Roman times, who were they got to enjoy the riches of the slave labor during their lives. And so they freed those slaves upon their death, but some of this American South and in the Roman Empire also freed the slaves of others by paying for them with silver and gold. You see, this is the image from our text in which the Apostle Paul preaches for us today. Paul uses this to describe what Jesus has done for you and me. It is through the purchase of his suffering at the death that you may experience the Christ that dwells with you. It is the blood of Christ, not silver or gold or any of these other lavish that has bought you, but it is through the blood of Christ. And the power of evil, sin, and death will be no more, but the Christ who took this form of slave has set us free with his own death. We not only fear God, but we love God because he has done us through this. But through the death for us, he makes this difference for our own daily life experience. So remember your identity, who you were made to last and not to perish through the living and enduring word of God. Through Christ, we have been introduced to the very true nature of God our Father. Jesus said, the Father and I are one, that although we are distinct, we are of one essence. That through Easter, we know and place all our trust in Jesus to set our faith and hope deep in the rock of God. You see, just as the Father was faithful to Christ, we can be rest assured 
that God will continue to be faithful to his believers as well. Jesus emphasized the purity is at the matter of our heart. Because our faith, we acknowledge that we are different not only externally, but internally. Peter shifts this, the, the gear reminding us that our identity is to continuously live in truth. The truth that is presented, the life Christ calls us to imitate. One of the most radical ways for Christians to remember our identity is through the power of love. You see, I stated in verse 22, we have been purified to be able to respond to the world through love. Love that comes deep from the heart. The Greek expression of filio, it, is, it stretches beyond the love that is nurtured between a friendship, but a love that is carried between brothers and sister. You see, imitate agape love is an expression of the beauty and the power of love. Agape love is the presentation is presented an action rather than just the feeling of a word. It doesn't require that we approve of the actions of the person we love, but we get to enjoy their company through love. You see, Peter calls our Christian love to mirror the new commandments from Christ. And so what are practical ways in which you are demonstrating this new commandment from Christ to our world today? What ways are you presenting a love that is not imperishable, but eternal? As a faithful community, we live by the word of God who lives and remains forever. So much in life is perishable. From tall buildings to long highways or machines, we would like to imagine that they would all be here forever, but they're not. It is only the word of God that lives and will remain to live. And so we as Christians have built our lives on the word of God. You see, Christians will always be unnormal people. We have been called to be set apart, to respond, respond differently, and to live by a new commandment that stretches what the world deems as normal. During the season of our life, may you remember whose you are and who you are. Together, we are walking into a new norm as continuous, unnormal people who are filled with the living God who makes us wholesome. And so let us pray. Father God, as we come before you on this morning of worship, we come to you as holy people, understanding and embodying the word that you have reached out for us, oh God. May your word continue to elevate us, empower us, motivate us, challenge us, and cultivate us into who you are calling us to be in this world today. May your words fall afresh onto each and every one of us, that we will be transformed into your goodness and your kindness that our love may be transcended that our love may be empowered and that our love may be the living light into this world today this is our prayer that we offer unto you in jesus christ the lord and savior amen hello everybody please join us as we sing blessed assurance
it, this is a reminder we are sewing masks for those in our community and it's called sewing for hope and if you're interested in sewing a mask or doing a couple of masks um, you can get material and instructions and a pattern at the church office on Tuesdays or Thursdays and bring them in so that we can have Martin can have them on Sunday morning um, or for Sunday afternoon if please help us out and have a stack of masks ready for us next week thank you family again we're continuing with our ministry of creating love signs and so for those who are interested in participating whether you pick up a lawn sign yourself or you come to the church office every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 1. Feel free to participate and be active with this new ministry as we continue to be the lights into this world. Cultivating a sign that provides a sense of love, hope, joy, and peace for the world that is in need today. Hey church family, thank you for joining us in worship today. You know, as we continue to go through this pandemic, many of us are feeling a little unnormal. But the reminder that we receive today from scripture is that as Christians, we are a normal people. It wasn't normal that Christ has resurrected from the dead. It wasn't normal when Christ had healed and forgiven the sins of those. It wasn't normal for Christ to associate with himself with others outside of Jewish people. And so today, may we indulge in this new normal that as Christians, we continuously walk with the light that dwells within each and every one of us. And so I, I encourage you, church, may you continue to live with the hope through the resurrected Christ. That we are in a time that may seem uncertain but we are promised that we are not alone. And so receive this benediction. May the hope of our Lord and the peace that passes all understanding dwell within each and every one of our households. May his provision be a light into our path. And may his guidance through the Holy Spirit continue to nurture us as your beloved people. May we go in love, may we go in peace, and may we go in hope through the perseverance of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, and we all say, amen. Church, have a great week. Have a blessed night.